Let's talk about spiritual gaslighting right here on Keeping It In Context. The term gaslighting comes from a 1938 play which was later adopted in a 1944 American psychological thriller film called Gaslight, which centered around a young woman named Paula whose husband slowly tries to manipulate her into believing that she is mentally unwell and is descending into insanity in an effort to steal from her valuable jewelry that was left to her as an inheritance by her aunt who was actually killed by her husband when Paula was younger. By constantly lying to her and convincing her to doubt herself and that what she perceives to be reality is nothing more than her imagination, the psychological abuse almost ends up working to perfection until someone from the outside helps her to see the truth of what was really going on. The film really does give us a good depiction of what gaslighting means. Gaslighting is in fact a form of psychological and emotional abuse in which the abuser attempts to sow self-doubt and confusion in their victim's mind by distorting reality and forcing them to question their own judgments in order to keep or gain control over them. Now, while gaslighting often occurs in romantic relationships, it can also occur within families such as between parents and children, in the workplace, and even in religious spiritual environments. And when it comes to spiritual gaslighting, just like normal gaslighting behaviors, a person will use spirituality or spiritual spiritual concepts as the weapon to manipulate another person into self-doubt and confusion about their sanity and their perception of reality. For example, when it comes to Christian groups that are heavily legalistic and have narcissistic leaderships, if a person is beginning to question some of the practices or beliefs that are being taught and are investigating to see whether they are in fact biblically sound, other members of the group and leadership will engage in spiritual gaslighting by using certain phrases and questions like, well, you know the devil tempted Eve and got her to question God, and so what's happening to you is nothing more than the devil trying to deceive you. Or, do you really want to question this truth? It would be the same as questioning God, and we know we can't question God, right? Or, if only you had the revelation. Only you have this issue. How's your prayer life? Maybe if you were more submitted. Maybe if you had more faith. Maybe you just need to be more consistent in church. Maybe you need to fast and read your Bible more. So after all these things you've seen and experienced, do you really think that what we're teaching didn't come from God? These phrases and questions, although they might sound innocent, are in fact good examples of how gaslighting works. If there is an attempt to specifically address the actions of a leader and how they're using their authority in an abusive manner towards them, phrases and questions will be used by that leader like, I think you're just being too sensitive. You just need to get out of your feelings. You're just overreacting to what I'm saying and doing. It's not me that's the problem, it's your perception of me. Have I not been saved longer than you? Am I not your spiritual mother or father? Didn't God lead you to be under my ministry? Do you think God made a mistake bringing you here? What does the Bible say about obedience and submission? Can you truly say that you're demonstrating that? Maybe what you're dealing with is a rebellious spirit Spirit. Again, good examples of how gaslighting works. If sexual abuse or inappropriate behavior has taken place, whether in the past or present, and it's being addressed even to those who have committed the acts, certain phrases and questions will also be used like, well, how dare you accuse me of doing that? I don't think that actually happened that way. I think you just have really bad memory. Sounds like you're just over-exaggerating because that's not how it really went. And even if there is a slight bit of a confession made by that person, they will say things to divert the attention away from them like, well, you know, if you hadn't been leading me on, maybe things wouldn't have gotten this far. So you mean after everything we've been through and everything I've done for you, now you want to bring this up? Do you really think it was that bad? I mean, it didn't seem that way with you in the beginning. If I remember correctly, didn't you agree to some of it? I thought we had already agreed to forgive each other and move on. When these kinds of phrases and questions are presented, it puts the victim in an unsure place where they now have to reevaluate everything that they've been seeing and feeling and thinking to determine whether everything they see, feel, and think is in fact real or not. You know, am I really being too sensitive? Am I exaggerating what really happened? What if it is the devil just messing with my mind? Maybe I'm not as spiritual as I need to be. That's why all these questions are all of a sudden coming up. Spiritual gaslighting leaves you constantly in self-doubt, unable to discern the truth from the lie. And as a result, leaves you with serious short-term and long-term issues, such as, but not limited to, anxiety, 
chronic depression, isolation, trust, uncontrolled aggression, insecurity, codependency towards the gaslighter, psychological and post-traumatic stress, and even thoughts and attempts of suicide. Spiritual gaslighting can be devastating. And so since this is the case, spiritual gaslighting, whether it's done knowingly or not, needs to be addressed and uh, help needs to be given to those who have suffered from it. And so here are five ways to overcome spiritual gaslighting. Number one, recognize the tactics being used. Although it can be hard to recognize if you're being spiritually gaslighted or not, um, because of the nature of the abuse, the only way to escape the cycle of it is to be able to see and understand what type of tactics are used. If a person is constantly changing the understanding of what you're saying and what the scriptures say to cause you to doubt how you're understanding things, they are using willful misinterpretation as a spiritual gaslighting tactic. If a person is constantly bringing up their position of authority when speaking to you in an effort to make what they say more credible than yours, they're using power language to gaslight. If the person constantly refuses to listen to any of your concerns or pretends not to understand them, they're using the tactic of withholding. If the person is constantly questioning your memory and denying that the events occurred the way that you clearly remember them, that's called countering. If the person is constantly forgetting what happened to further discredit your memory, they are using denial to gaslight. If the person keeps changing the subject to divert your attention from a topic or from themselves, they're gaslighting you with diversion. And if they keep asserting that you are overreacting, over-exaggerating to what has happened, they are gaslighting you by trivializing. If you can see and understand that these tactics are being used, you can have a better chance at determining your perception of reality more easily. Which leads me to the second way to overcome spiritual gaslighting, and that is to remember and embrace your personal truth. In other words, remember and hold on to whatever you know has happened and what is still happening, how you felt and how you still feel, and what you thought and what you still think, regardless of what others, including the gaslighter, is thinking and saying. If you are honestly and prayerfully studying the scriptures, for example, and you can see and understand things contrary to what you've been taught and what you have have been taught has been found to be wrong, don't allow the gaslighter to twist your honest and prayerful search for truth into nothing more than demonic deception. Remember and hold on to the fact that God gave you a mind to think and to reason. Remember and hold on to scriptures such as Acts chapter 17 and verse 11, which says that the Berean Jews were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Nothing that these Bereans did was demonic and nothing that you are doing is demonic either. If you know that you have been either verbally or sexually abused or have experienced inappropriate behavior um, by a member or by a leader, don't allow them to gaslight you by downplaying what happened or by dismissing it as something being blown out of proportion, but hold on to what you truly remember when it happened, where it happened, how it happened, why it happened, and who it happened with. Those things are factual and cannot be taken away from you. Gather all the evidence you can that will solidify what you remember about your truth of the situation so that there will be little to no excuse from the one causing the abuse when it is presented and proper action on your end can be taken. Number three, don't feel responsible for how the gaslighter is responding to you. Many times when you're addressing your concerns about certain things or when you are confronting the person who is gaslighting, the person you are addressing or confronting will often try to divert the attention from off of themselves to make you the real problem. They will try to reverse the narrative claiming to be the actual victim instead and not you. They will act defensive and, and act as if they are the ones being provoked and in need of your apology. They will say things like, I can't believe you're acting like this towards me. After all of these years and after all of the ministries I've allowed you to participate in, this really angers me or this is really breaking my heart. Or this is the wrong time to bring all of this up when there is so much ministry work in front of me. There their response towards you, however, should never be your responsibility or your concern. You don't have to care.
cave in or become silent in regret just to spare their feelings, especially the ones with a narcissistic personality. Those types of individuals are not interested in your feelings. They are only interested in theirs. What you see, feel, and think, and what you know is true is what's more important. And if what you present rubs them the wrong way, you have to have a so be it mentality. You have to understand that the truth that you hold is way too valuable to be ignored and to be forgotten just because of the way the gaslighter chooses to respond to it. And then number four, get outside professional assistant. Whether it's a Christian counselor or a therapist who specializes in that area, getting professional help is one of the best things you can do to help overcome spiritual gaslighting or any other abuse for that matter. And the reason why is because number one, they are in fact specifically trained in that area. Talking to friends and family members who are not trained, although that may be helpful, won't be able to give you proper guidance on what to do and how to think. Number two, they are typically a safe place to talk through the issues at hand. They can give you a proper observation and uh, perspective of what's going on as they will be looking at everything from the outside looking in with no attachments. And they are a neutral place, especially when there is difficulty addressing the issues to the very ones doing the gaslighting. I mean, it's kind of hard to ask someone like your abusive leadership on how to recover from gaslighting when they're the ones gaslighting. Just like how Paula in the 1944 film had to receive outside help in order to finally break free from the abuse of gaslighting, we too will need outside help, especially from a professional level, to break free from it. And then lastly, but most importantly, allow the Holy Spirit to lead, guide, and comfort you through the process of overcoming. The Bible makes it plain to us in John chapter 16 and verse 13 that when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. The Bible also says in John chapter 14, starting in verse 16, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. Through your consistent effort of being submitted to God and to his word, the Holy Spirit can and will be with you to give you direction and soundness of mind as you overcome the effects of spiritual gaslighting. Although it may seem challenging and confusing in those moments, you should never feel as if you are completely on your own. The Holy Spirit is always present and will be the key to experiencing the comfort and the actual freedom from any abuse and from any tactics that may present itself. Well, that's it for this video. Hope it was a blessing to you and a help to anyone who has gone through spiritual gaslighting or is currently experiencing it. I myself have had a fair share of experiencing spiritual gaslighting when I began to question certain teachings and practices within my old church group that was in fact unbiblical. And um, I was told many different things such as, but not limited to being given over to demonic spirits for questioning their truth and changing some of my theological views. All of which was just simply an attempt to uh, distort the reality of the situation. But be it as it may, some good books to read on the topics of gaslighting is a book called Gaslighting, Overcoming Emotional and Spiritual Abuse by Letting Go of a Bad Relationship by G.S. Henson. Another book called Recovering from Gaslighting and Narcissistic Abuse, Codependency and Complex PTSD by Don Barlow. And also The Subtle Power of Spiritual Abuse by David Johnson and Jeff Van Vonderen. Also for those who watch and if you know of any other materials that would be pertinent or would be helpful to this particular topic, please do leave it in the comment section so that way that material can be um, searched as well. And of course, if you like the content, please like, share, subscribe to this channel if you haven't and hit that notification bell so that you can keep up when I drop a new video. And as always, as you delve back into the word, just remember to remind yourself that as I'm studying the word, I gotta make sure I keep everything in context. <music>